Good morning and welcome to worship at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Vancouver, Washington. I'm Pastor Jean Duval Donaldson and I use the pronouns she, her, hers. Beautiful Savior is a reconciling in Christ congregation, which means among many things that we believe God's doors are open to all and so we also seek to um, provide a welcoming, inclusive place for all people. This building is on the property of the, uh, uh, on the ancestral homeland of the Cowlitz Chinook and Click Attack Nations, and we want to offer our gratitude and respect to those who came before us, and we seek to provide uh, good stewardship in this time as well. Sounds like I'm breathing into it. There we go. So announcement-wise, um, let me put some down. Last week, I asked people to fill out a form that said where you experience Jesus or God at work in the world. And if you have not filled out one of those little slips of paper, there's some on the round table out in the narthex. And if you at home can put it into Facebook's chat or send an email to me with what you would put in, um, how and where do you experience Jesus or God at work in the world. If you are interested in taking a class that's mostly online, but a little bit in person on CPR and AED, now's the time. We have a class coming up on the 22nd, and um, there's three hours of online work that has to be done in advance, but if you've just been waiting to do that, now might be the time and you, are, you just need to let me know you're going to do it so I can monitor the numbers and not go over what we should. And go ahead and come up. I'm going to put this on. Um, we're m more back to normal with things. So today the anti-racism book begins at 3, the study. And if you need a link, you just email Pastor Jean at beautifulsaviorlutheran.com and I can send you the Zoom link. We're looking at Jesus and John Wayne. Oh, your announcement. Hi, um, just a brief announcement. Uh, you're gonna see it coming in eBlast, and it's listed, this is for all the internet people too, it's listed on our website, um, Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church, Peace and Justice Ministry is sponsoring a talk by Dr. Karate. He's been to Beautiful Savior several times. Uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, and he's giving an update on uh, his work in Afghanistan. And I'm telling you right now, it's good news. It's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. So this is on Thursday, January 20th, 6.15, and the Zoom link is right there on our website. Thank you. So you can just click on it and be with us. Just here, go ahead and hand it to me. Yeah. And um, it seemed like there might be one more thing. We had the all congregation faith formation between services today, and it looked so interesting. Um, so, uh, it was a process about hunger. All right, I think we're good to go. We're also um, collecting money for STARS, too. Oh, so yes. if, you've not, um, if you haven't contributed to that ministry for a while, this is a ministry that Stephen and Chris Manesto Sari are in in Cairo, Egypt. And so um, Rick and I are on our way there on Saturday to help fit some kids with hearing aids. So if, um, if you, it'd be great to give them good news about how much has been contributed. So if you're interested in doing that, please do so. There are stars on Mary Ellen's desk in the office for those people that contribute, just as a, as a token of our appreciation for contributions to that ministry. Thanks. Okay. All right. With that, we're going to go with still breathy sounds because I can't get that on. All right, so if you would stand as you are able, if you're in this space. 
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in Cana of Galilee. We are here to celebrate. Celebrate with a wedding party. The confetti has been flung. The wine is poured. The people are gathered. The wedding banquet is prepared. And the feast is waiting. The music beginning. And you are the honored guests. Welcome to the wedding. Come and enjoy the wine before it runs out. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, Jesus, Jesus shows us all the ways that we fall short. He also provides a way out of the holes we dig ourselves into. Forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices, be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jesus does indeed forgive. Jesus cleanses us of our sin and recreates us in God's image. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Go and walk free of guilt, shame, and sin because you are made new. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all.
we pray, holy God, you rejoice with us when we celebrate our relationships. When Jesus turned water into wine, he honored the host. Teach us to honor our relationships as Jesus did. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. A reading for, from John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. And now it's time for the children to meet me over in the children's area. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to hand these over now so I don't have to think about it later. There we go. In there. All right. Hi. So, who has been to a wedding before? Okay. So, everybody has. Cool. Have you been at a wedding here? Yeah, I've heard there haven't been any in a while. Yeah? What sorts of things happen at weddings? Yep. Yeah. What does that mean? Okay. Does anybody know what that means? I'll tell you in a minute, maybe. What other things happen at weddings? Is it something that they do there? No? Anybody want to say what they saw happen at the wedding? Uh -huh. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay, so they walk down the middle of where there's a lot of chairs and there's somebody waiting for them and um, they kiss oftentimes, yeah. There's usually something a little before that, but yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. And afterward, there's usually a big party. Not always, but that's a pretty 
typical time for a wedding. So do you know why most, or why people who get married get married? Sherry? Hmm? Oh, never mind, okay. Okay, because they're in love. Yeah, in the United States, that's pretty common. Um, that's kind of how we think about it. So, yep, weddings are a time when um, people come together to celebrate their love, and, in the United States anyway, in current times. And um, usually there's, who's, who are the people sitting in the chairs? Yep. Family? Anybody else? Yeah, so friends and family are usually there. Are there usually strangers there? Not unless they're related to one of the family or friends. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, yeah, so it might be stranger to you. So, yep, a lot of people come together to give witness and to help or to say that they're going to support the couple as they join their lives together. And it is something we do in the church that involves God, but it also is legal. It's a legal joining together of two people that are married. Um, so it's kind of outside the church as well. And that's partly why we do the getting married sort of thing. So it's a little bit about law, a little bit about commitment, a little bit about love, okay, a lot of bit about love and commitment to each other. So um, today's story we heard was about a wedding that Jesus went to. We don't get a lot of details about what, hap what the wedding looked like, bless you. Um, so I needed you to help kind of fill in the space for what might have been going on there um, other than what Jesus did, all right? So Jesus did a sign, a miracle, and a few weeks ago I had you all point I guess we were pointing at lights, and we were saying that when you point at something, are you looking at the finger? No, you're pointing at the whatever it is, right? So in this, it's called a sign in the story because it's pointing to the glory of God. It's really not about um, the sign or miracle in the story. Did anyone hear what the miracle in the story was? You remember, Max? You'd have had to be probably be listening closely. Yeah. It, Jesus took water and changed it into wine. So, you, and I don't know if you've ever seen wine, but um, sometimes it's a dark red color, and I'm pretty sure that's the kind of wine they had. So, and it had a really good flavor. They said it's like the top kind of wine. So that would be a miracle. But it really wasn't about that. It was about Jesus showing love and grace. So, all right, let us pray. Holy God, thank you for joining us in relationships. Help us to take care of one another in relationships as you take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks. And so, yep, there's a word search, I think, inside there, right? And coloring. Yeah, and the color crayons are on the little, um, it's like this out there, the little table, all right? So if you need those. Thank you. Let us pray. Most holy God, we give you thanks for this day and for one another, for the ability to continue to gather together to worship you and praise you, gathering either virtually or in person. We ask that your Holy Spirit, who has joined us together, will be in the inspiration of our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Today, the story is obviously about a wedding. 
doesn't give too many details. We don't know anything about the, the groom and the bride. Um, we know that in those times there would have been an expectation that everyone in town would be there um, because these were small towns and communities were in close relationship with one another. I do think it's rather interesting because this is before Jesus is really active in doing his ministry that it said there was a wedding and the mother of Jesus was there, period. And then it says Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding, almost like an afterthought or an in addition to Mary. Um, so obviously before Jesus was sought out or reviled for the, the great teachings and such before he was well known. And so he is there and his mom is there. And I don't know if you notice that it, it says in the passage that Jesus' mother was there. But what doesn't it say? It doesn't say her name. It doesn't say Mary. And so I hadn't really noticed before reading up on this a bit that it, the name of Mary is never used in the book of John. Kind of interesting. It's more, a, in the book of John, there's a different take on Jesus and a different take on the mother of Jesus um, than in the past because, um, not because, it's just that there's a little bit more distance, and so Mary is important because of the role she plays in being the mother of Jesus. And um, when it keeps underscoring mother of Jesus, it reminds us that Jesus had a mother, that Jesus was human, even though in this gospel there's an understanding of Jesus being divine as well. Um, so we don't ever get to forget that Jesus was a human being who had been born. And so his mother is there, and as can happen with mothers and sons or other children in the family, as sometimes the, the mom will say something, and the child pretty much knows what mom really is saying behind the words. And uh, so I get that sense in this, that Jesus was hearing in Mary's words that said, they're out of wine, that she might be thinking, and you should do something about it. So um, then he responds to her in a way that when I first hear it, before I, I looked at the, the wider story, I hear my son Ben, because he's the one who can put the most snarky sound to his voice when he uses things, uh, I could see him doing woman. Um, he, he likes saying Jean. Um, so I was picturing him and that maybe he's just having a little bit of an attitude towards mom because mom's pushing him to do something he doesn't want. Um, could be. Woman, even in those times, to be just named woman is very impersonal and not what you would normally hear. It's not a slur, but it's not what you would normally call your mother. And so um, Jesus is responding to her and then also tells her that this is not his hour. These things have some meaning. Uh, there's like several markers in the story already that maybe the um, author of John is communicating something a little bit different than a straightforward story. So John was one of the last writers of the gospel. So the, the Christian people had been forming. And whether they called themselves Christians or not, the followers of the way, the followers of Jesus. So the very first part of this story that we heard is on the third day. And on the third day brings up what thought? about resurrection, you know, that Jesus died and was resurrected. So maybe it means something in the particular week, but that's code to trigger our minds to respond and wonder what is going on in the story. And then um, the, the fact that he said woman, I've always thought it was being snarky, but I love studying and found out that and, and actually, it hit me once. The other place that Jesus calls his mother woman, does anybody remember where it is in the book of John? 
It's at the bottom, at the foot of the cross. As he's going to um, kind of pass his mom on to his beloved disciple and the beloved disciple to the mom. Um, and then I thought, oh, it isn't being snarky, maybe. Maybe it is being loving, and, and maybe it is about a little bit of distancing that Jesus was there for more than a familial um, responsibility and role, but there was love in that and caring in that use of the word as well. So Jesus had, in the book of John, much more awareness of what was going to happen and of his divinity. And so some commentators say it, it's showing more distance that Jesus won't be responding to or doing whatever the family says. Um, he's, he has his role to play, and he's going to do it. Um, maybe, but he also seems to have been listening to mom because she, with full trust, even though he just said no, is saying, um, do whatever he says. And it, as if she already knows, he will do what, it, what needs to happen, what um, is important to do. And so Jesus does. He tells the um, servants to fill up six big stone jars of water or urns. And one reason with the, the stone, why that's important versus clay, is that it's more pure. It's harder to contaminate something in stone than in clay. And so there's, this water has been used. There may be a little bit in the jars or the urns, but for the most part, it's done its purpose. It's been used. And Jesus says, fill them up again. And then take a scoop of that water over to the steward, as they did. And the steward tastes it, and as we heard, you know, has an amazing experience of wine, and um, enough to comment on it, because he's used to people slipping in the cheapest stuff, the watered down stuff, uh, at this point in the wedding. Um, a wedding in those days was around seven days. So long period of time. And one of the things I also learned is that if you would run out of wine, I already knew it would be a dishonor. It would show that you weren't capable or have enough resources. What I didn't know is that the, pe the guests were to have brought in the wine, and it would also be an indication of not enough relationship. It, it reminds me of, um, in at least, some um, Mexican families, other Latinx families, where the godparents have very, very active roles in providing um, for different marker points as people gather, like the quinceanera or um, confirmation, first communion, that the, the godparents help pr provide the, um, the means in which to have a big party. So it, it was like that here in this Jewish family. Um, there's a little bit of wondering about the six urns because the number six is considered incomplete. And things like that made a huge difference in those days. Um, how you worked with the, the different um, signs or markers or portents of things to come. So maybe that was a big deal. But what was really huge is that Jesus had regular, ordinary water fill these jars. A scoop of the water is taken to the steward, and the steward thinks, who did it? Is responsible? Not Jesus. So Jesus said to Mary, my hour has not come. Do you remember that? There is also... Guess what? At the end of Jesus' life, where Jesus says, my hour has come, right? Um, so at this point, my hour has not come. But he didn't totally ignore mom. He kind of did a both and. He helped the family avoid their shame. And he didn't keep the attention on himself. Because the steward thought that this uh, miracle, well, didn't even know it was a miracle, this amazing amount of wine or taste of wine was because 
the groom had planned it. So Jesus could still be under the radar. Now, as we've had other conversations, it is just like Jesus that the first revelations come to the ordinary people. And so the only ones that really know what's happened other than Mary and his disciples, who he has said, come and see, and they are seeing, um, is the fact that uh, the, st the servants, the people of no clout, no social worth, are the ones that witness that a miracle has happened. It wasn't the steward. It wasn't um, a big, big name person. And so just as we've heard in story after story, this is the way that Jesus operates. Jesus uses ordinary things like water. And Jesus uses ordinary people and, and reveals to ordinary people from the edges, from the, the lower echelons of society, in order to reveal and bring close the kingdom of God. That's what's happening in this wedding as well. And it, it is a way that Jesus is revealing to his disciples something more about himself, but he doesn't want them or us or anyone to get so focused on whatever the miracle is in front of us that we stop paying attention to what it is that Jesus is pointing to and it through whatever sign he is using. And so um, his disciples believe him because of it, but he needs to do a lot more teaching with them and witnessing and, and showing them how to live life according to God's will. And so he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. So this wedding, a family time, a community time, a connecting and relationship time, and a time of really not that great of importance to anyone outside the family. Do you go to other people's weddings that you don't know? There are wedding crashers. But anyway, the, it's an ordinary um, happening in the ebb and flow of life. And Jesus is there. And it's a joyous time, and it is a glorious time. And it's fun, and it's raucous, because at seven days of wine, I think it would be raucous. Um, so, yes, God is in that, that reality, everydayness. But then the story, the author of it, that put those hints pointing forward to when Jesus was at the end of his life on earth, and that Jesus also knows and is in the pain and the suffering. He died a death more painful than most of us will. He knows what it is like to give of himself and to experience the joy and the sorrow. God is with us in Jesus Christ through the entirety of our lives. Nothing is a time, there is no time when we are separate from God reaching out to us and wanting to be in the mix of our lives with us. So what do we learn from this? Well, it's kind of hard to think about ourselves making wine out of water and such, but we do have evidence here and we can look for how God is in the ordinary, ordinary circumstances, ordinary people, ordinary you and me, and God will work through us and transform us just like God, through Jesus, transformed that water into wine. God has work to do in this world, and God, for whatever God's reason, has chosen to use us and proved through Jesus coming among us, what is possible. Through our baptism, we have been already transformed. Thanks be to God and the Holy Spirit that lives in and among and through us. Amen.
Go ahead and stand to sing. It just always works better. seated and those who are going off of council or who have served in the last two years um, please come forward I was gonna have you stand in your place but go ahead and come forward if you're getting off of council not getting off she your term your season has ended until the next season how's that some of the people um, were at the earlier service, and there's, as any week, some who are not here. Dear friends, united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are invited to join in God's mission for the life of the world. We are called to fulfill that mission in our lives and as appointed roles within God's church. Today, is, it is our privilege to give thanks for those who have served on the Church Council of Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church over months of extra demand as we all learned how to carry out the work of the church in a pandemic. Today, we also express gratitude to those who have completed their most recent term of service, including Ann Giles, who has been our um, council president, and Heidi Mays, that has been our Vice President and the Chair to the Return to the Building Task Force. Bert Alvaro is not here today. Um, and Leslie Quigley has been our liaison to worship and music. And, oh, and Ray Smith came to the early service. And Mark Lead is one who left uh, a while, a little while back. Um, I can't remember, oh, to the um, Peace and Justice, right? Liaison? Okay. Yeah. So, um, the reason, well, the reason I wanted to name them and others, um, there's other names in the, the worship folder, is it's always a, a commitment and it takes a lot of um, care to serve on the council. And I always appreciate folks that can do that. But since I came, which would have already made it strange because it's a new pastor. Um, then there's COVID, and so the, the demand on them was way more than what would typically be the case, and some people are continuing on that it, through that time and continuing on. Um, 
But for the beginning, we met weekly. And then we met maybe every other week. And finally, we, get, we took a breath because we were kind of learning to live into this thing, and we met again monthly. But the amount of effort that um, anyone on council the last two years has had to put in is, has been ramped up, and then the executive team especially has been, um, we, we still were meeting um, a lot, all, weekly sometimes, um, even beyond the other meetings. So let's give um, thanks and gratitude before I pray. Yeah. And you're standing in for the others that aren't here today, so. We pray, Almighty God, your Holy Spirit equips your people everywhere with a rich variety of gifts. We give thanks for the ways these gifts have been employed by these, your servants, as council members and congregational officers during their term of service. We praise you for shared joys and accomplishments, and we commend our work to you. Grant that we may continue to bring ju justice and peace through service built on integrity and respect through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. See, I had the clapping there, but it fit better before. So thank you very much. And now if the new members of the congregation, um, they're going to be named, not of the congregation, of the council. So everyone else, you all can leave and sit down. And the, um, okay. the new members can come forward. So Chad Hurdle, Colleen Peel, Nancy Kingston, and uh, Tom Alski was the first service. And should we bring up the continuing folks as well? Yep. And so Bill Oman, and who else did I see? Laura Snyder. Oh, Stacy Benson. Excellent. Sue Calvert, yes. And is there anyone else that I missed? So yesterday we had our council um, retreat for the year, which is kind of a, a reminder of this is what council does and um, doing a bit of the work of the council. It's not like Kathy Esparza says, one of the other ones, that's not much of a retreat. Retreats, you should be putting your feet up, drinking some good warm beverage. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, the, the new people are Chad and Helene and Kathy Esparza is gone and Tom was at the first service. So they're the four newest people. We give thanks for all of these people and the others that aren't here for their willingness to serve. We also acknowledge with gratitude uh, those who are continuing, the new and the continuing members. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. They serve two-year terms, and they can use, serve four in a row if they choose to. From among those who were elected to council by the congregation, four have been elected by the council itself, to serve as officers of the congregation. This is a legal um, role. I didn't tell you that. Uh, they will serve with me as the executive committee of Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. Our new officers are Nancy Kingston as our president, Helene Peel as our vice president, Chad Hurdle as our treasurer, and Stacy Benson as our secretary. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same gift, spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Now, why don't you all face me, because I have to ask you this question. Just for a minute. Yeah. All right. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. If anybody wants to read particulars, we have them in the um, bylaws that you could ask for. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith 
bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation and in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific areas of serving that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. So on behalf of the brothers and sisters, the siblings in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Now you can turn around and look at them. People of God, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? We will, and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. for all who responded to the call to serve in your name. Give them joy and fulfillment, care and guidance in their tasks. Help us all to give willingly and to receive thankfully the gifts of ministry, that your name may be glorified, your people live in peace, and your will be done, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Here, I'll come out here so you don't have to keep turning around. I now declare you as installed as officers and council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of God. Are you going to do that? Let's <laughs> express our thanks. I decided it wasn't kind to make you sit through the prayers <laughs> or stand up here. And you may stay seated for the prayers of the people. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, you are capable of turning the ordinary into something miraculous. Bolster our faith and give us confidence to do whatever it is that you require, that your glory might be shown through the humblest of acts. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. prayer. You have given us blessings far beyond our imagination and joys which surpass our own powers to produce. Gladden our hearts with the fruits of your creation given to be enjoyed, cherished, and shared. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. Sometimes we need encouragement to carry out those things of which you have made us capable. Use us and others to call forth the best and highest purpose in each other, even when we don't feel so inclined. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. You have fed us with the best and blessed us with abundant life. Bring healing where there is suffering, infirmity or lack of any kind. We lift up especially those on our prayer list. Wondrous God. Your saints keep constant company around your throne with joy surpassing any earthly celebration. Encourage our faith through their example and save us a place at your heavenly table. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray?
We pray for those who are experiencing things in their lives that are hard to bear, hard to understand, especially those that have recently been moved into care away from their family. We pray for all who continue to bear the weight of COVID, whether providing care or loss in the family or loss in their own health, possibly being ill now. We ask that you help each person feel your presence holding them and with them, even as they go through hard time. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. All things we place in your trustworthy hands, knowing that our concerns, our desires, and our loved ones are safe in your keeping. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. This is the time that we, that I say thanks, and maybe I should start having other people say thanks for um, the ways that this congregation and people associated with it are providing support for the ministries that we do and toward the ministries yet to come. Let us pray. Loving Lord, you provide for all our needs, both the important ones and the ones we may take for granted. May we never doubt that each act of kindness is blessed with your grace and received with thanksgiving. Pour your blessings upon these offerings and all those who give them, that we may be joined to one another in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And because I'm not sharing from the table, I'll take my mask down. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, O God, the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, life from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. In all this, we bless you for your only begotten Son, who fulfilled and will fulfill all your promises. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Until that day, we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And this table is the table of Jesus, and Jesus invites all people to partake at the table of his body and blood. He came to be for all of us. He came and gave of himself for all of us. We trust that the Holy Spirit 
who Jesus loosed upon the world, is joining us together across time and space and is able to make it so that, as Jesus said, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you. We will be using the individual um, cups within this space for the next few weeks and at home you have your festive drink and your bread. Let us partake of these now. Technical difficulties within the space. I don't know about outside the space. We'll keep working on it. Let's move. Okay. All right. Please stand as you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in. Amen. <laughs> to a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.
pretty good. I'm enjoying the sun.